guys, here's a quick video on going into service mode. So to go into service mode, you click on software. On the software, come up with your car. You hold in your finger on your car's model. You see a little ring of light will appear after holding it there for a couple seconds. See that ring of light? And then you type in service. And then hit OK. Ask if you want to enable service mode. Say yes. And then inside of service mode, you have a diff different items. One, the top one is how you get out of service mode. So if you're ever stuck in service mode, you just click on exit. You can go into service settings. Inside of service settings, it will show you all the different settings you can turn on and off. You can turn on phone Bluetooth. You can do you know mobile app controls. And some of these are grayed out. Um, as you go through the list, self-parking is disabled. Pre-update V12 SOC or SOC checks when attempting to perform a software update. Remember to plug in the 12V support. Uh, you can turn on walk away lock, turn it off. You know whatever you want to do there. Um, security alarm, honk on lock. I I like honk on lock. Anyway, you can turn that on or off. You can turn your mirror dimming on and off. Right. So just different settings inside of the car, and then. You can, the biggest one you want to look for if you're buying a car is click on the service alerts. And you'll see in the service alerts, I have one that's the THC RCM actuator. Cabin, climate controls. Yeah. So the biggest thing, any of these that show up, you want to Google them to see, you know, what exactly that means. Um, this one came up as I got in the car saying that the my key fob battery is low. It's no big deal. And the biggest thing is you have recent alerts and you have active alerts. And you want to go through the recent alerts as well as your active alerts and see if there's any BMS U018 or O29. Those are the two big ones. Either way, your pack needs maintenance on it. And from what I've seen most of the time, Tesla is going to replace your pack if you have either of those U18 or U029. Um, so anyway, you can go through like the different errors. This one's saying the V12 is not supported. Um, and that one came up today, right? It There's a bunch of errors in here that oftentimes mean absolutely nothing, but you want to look for, you know, the big battery errors. And any of them that you do see, you know, take a screenshot of it or a picture of it on your phone, right? And then go out to Google and start Googling it. And a lot of it will take you to the Tesla Honors Club where people have presented the errors and, you know, other people are helping with it. Um, you can also toggle up at the top, you know, if you need to go to the service center to have it fixed, then it will limit the errors. The service center says that they should be fixing. And then you also have ones for the customer would need to fix it, such as replacing my key fob battery. I'll have to Google what this charge port disabled. GTW 042 CPMIA. I don't know. My charge port works just fine. So I don't know what that one is. I'd have to Google it. And there's enough errors that, you know, some people are going to know them right off the bat. And other ones people aren't going to know. And they're going to have to look them up, right? Um... Yeah, anyway, so that's as far as the service alerts. You can reinstall the software. I don't do any of that stuff. You can do a touch check where you touch around the screen to see if all the parts of the screen are working. You can do brake burnishing, like after you go to the car wash, your rotors will get pretty rusty and you can do that to clean them off. Um, door handle calibration, my handles can't be calibrated. They're the old school um, micro switches. But if you have the new ones that have a magnetic sensor, then those can be calibrated on the Model S. And then you have a coolant air purge. You can click that on and then it'll run the coolant pumps to purge the air out of the system. So that's it on an MCU-1. If you have an MCU-2, you can go in and look at the battery. And I'll make another video for MCU-2, but it's pretty much, you know, pretty... Once you get in here, it's pretty easy to go through and see what things are. And if there's any sort of errors, you know, Google's your friend.
So anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.